Hey, what's up, Uncle Jesse here? There goes my official banner. It says Uncle Jesse, Aho Express. This was in the autograph by the artist, this guy named Johnny Blaze. He's a New York uh, artist, and he's the one who created this, and he came up, and he signs it down here, Johnny Blaze, and this is the official banner. And this banner is in the process of getting copyrighted, so that nobody can copy it. Oh, anyway, don't try it, because I'll go after you. I'll go after you, I'm telling you. Anyway, folks, oh, yeah, that's my official MTA badge. There it goes. MTA. Okay. So anyway, folks, um, I just want to thank everyone who has been sending me uh, prayers and sending me good well wishes. It has been great. I feel the love. I Now I realize I'm New York's favorite uncle, um, <laughs> Uncle Jesse. Anyway, folks, uh, the, my, my condition, as you might not, not know, you might know, is I am diabetic and I have a condition called neuropathy that it sends uh, its nerve ending damage and it, it has destroyed uh, most of my nerves and my feet. I have no more feelings from my uh, from my, my ankle down. So my my toes and my feet are very uh, sensible to uh, to injuries. I've had numerous injuries. I broke my foot, uh, my left foot one time. I've had I've had about six or seven operations on my feet. Right now I'm walking around with a right toe that's broken and they can't fix it because if they do, uh, I might lose it because I'm diabetic. And I am also walking around with a one inch uh, torn tear on my arch, on my right foot. And yesterday, uh, a couple of, I was out for two weeks for the uh, for the, the torn ligament, but yesterday, uh, um, well, about a week ago, I got a blister on my toe. Uh, didn't pay too much attention to the doctor, said it was okay. I wore some brand new shoes for work and they were kind of narrow and they rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. And rubbed. And it turned into it made it, it made a hole. It made a hole. I will spare you the pictures, but believe me, it made a hole. And it looks like somebody stuck a firecracker between and blew my toe off. Anyway, it was very bad. I went and my doctor. I want to thank Doctor Sharma, who's been with me for five years. He saved me a couple of times. He saved my toe because he said that the infection would have traveled a little bit more into the bone. I would have lost my toe or toes. So Dr. Sharma, thumbs up. And we go we go back about five years. And as a matter of fact, me and Dr. Sharma made a TV commercial together. And it's out there on the internet. And I made a commercial for QV, QVC also. And the neuropathy has also sends electrical impulses through my whole body. And, and my fingers are bent. Well, one of my fingers, this one is halfway bent. But I can't strain this finger out for nothing. I just it just doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't bend, and you know. It, so this is all part of the neuropathy. It's horrible. It sends shocks through my through my body. Sometimes I'm like this, and it's sending. So I take this medication, Cholerica, which has bad side effects. So now I'm taking something else for it, and the story goes on. So anyway, folks, let's get that out of the way. I just want to thank you guys, really, really, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, people who don't even know me have been waiting for me to come out of surgery to ask me how I'm doing. I mean, that's wonderful. I feel the love when people do that. I mean, you guys are my family, my friends, my fans. And when somebody tells me I waited, you know, I, I was waiting for you to get on, you know, get online and say something all day. It's it, my God, it really sends us so from the bottom of my heart. You know who you are, and uh, you, you know who you are. Anyway, folks. With that said, and last but not least, oh my God, I should punch myself. I have to mention the one and only my man, Gilbert the Piano. My man has been with me. Uh, we've been together eight years. And when I met, I was okay. Then I started falling apart. And uh, but he's been with me through everything. He takes me to doctors. He takes me to surgeries. And he was with me yesterday, and I felt so bad for him because I was in surgery. I went for something simple, and it turned out that was hours and hours, five, six, seven hours. And uh, he was waiting for me, and he took me home, and he carried me, and uh, for that, Gilbert, I love you. Anyway, folks, with that said, uh, <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about, remind you about what Uncle Jesse, what Uncle Jesse is. Uncle Jesse rides the subways, okay? And Uncle Jesse is a typical person, typical New Yorker, who sees things that most people don't see, okay? Now, uh, I know I can't change people. Uh, if you're stupid, you're stupid. If you inconsider, you're inconsider. If you're an MTAO, you're an MTAO. I'm sorry. I just say it the way it is. And that's what sometimes gets me in trouble. But it's just the way it is. You know, uh, the truth will set you free. So anyway, folks, uh, what I do is I use humor to bring dumb things that people do on the subway. Dumb things that people do on the subway. I bring it out to light and I put it on the Facebook. Uh, and I call them the MTA a-hole of the day. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't make fun of like the homeless. I don't make fun of the, uh, you know, people. I mean, it's just, 
it's just typical New Yorkers that are buried into their phones and they just do stupid stuff and they're not incons- they're inconsiderate. Maybe they, they're not. Maybe they don't know what's going on. I, I don't know. And I'm not here to determine because I'm not a psychiatrist. OK, if I would be, I, I'd be I'd be going crazy by now. But anyway, folks, so I, I turn it into a joke and I let everybody know that this person is doing something stupid at the same time, letting them know, you know, you're doing something stupid. We're using humor. That's all it is. Okay. So I got people trying to bust my balls sometimes. Oh, you you can't change the world. You look at you. Look, I don't want to hear it. I know it is. Okay. I know I can't change the world. I can't change the world, but I can turn it into humor. And that's what I am. I'm an up and coming comedian. I have a, I have it right over there. I can't show you because you might take my jokes, but I have a book where I'm writing my jokes for stand up. And I'm one of these days soon. You're going to see me on, cage, on stage. I said cage, but not stage. Okay. Maybe in a cage. I don't know. Anyway, folks. Uh, so every day I go out and I pick this paper up every morning. It's, it's a great paper. It's free. You know, in times like this, that we're, we're all money tight. This AM News or the Metro. Uh, but I prefer the AM because when you, if you go into the first couple of pages, there's always something about the subway. And it's always people complaining about something about the subway and about the people who ride the subway. So it's not only me. It's all these New Yorkers on my same page. They 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 are... They are complaining about stuff that people do on the subway. Let me see if I can. If I, I can't. And, you know, I get I get this from the people who, I'm telling you. Uh, let me see if anything works. But anyway, I can't see because of my glasses. But anyway, folks, every day I get this AM news. And I, there's people who, who, I send me, who send me stuff. As also, people send me stuff. People send me pictures of people doing something stupid so that I could post it, the MTA hole. And I do it from Monday to Fridays, maybe sometimes from Monday to Saturday. And sometimes even double pictures because if the picture is really good, I just, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you can't, I can't make this shit up. Anyway, let me see. I have a couple of things that people have sent me. It says here, gone are the days people give up seats for pregnant women on a train. Now everyone pretends to be sleeping. What happened to humanity? Hash mark MTA. You see this? You see this? This is what I'm telling you about. I got on a train the other day. I had a big fucking boot like this. Excuse my language. A big Frankenstein boot like this big. I have it over here somewhere. And a cane. Now, if I get on this, I mean, I don't expect, I don't, I'm not something, something special. But if, you know, if you got morals, you know, like I know I was in the way I was raised. If I see somebody elderly, if somebody, so a woman who's pregnant. I will get up for them, you know, I will, at least I offer them. Sometimes they don't want to sit them, at least offer them. So this lady, and I know when people are doing stuff on purpose. I walked in, I had a cane, I had the, the big giant boat, I had to look at my face that I was in pain. And some lady uh, looked at me and went, she went into a game. She went into a game. She got about this close looking down and she didn't want to look at me. She's an MTA a-hole. She's an MTA a-hole. That's all I have to say. Okay? So... Someday, hey, listen, let me watch my mouth. One day you're going to get old because you're halfway there. Because I looked at your face, you're halfway there. Uh, or more than halfway there. And you're going to be using a cane and you're going to expect people to get up for you because you're, you're using a cane. And you wanna, uh, I don't want anybody to pity me. I don't want anybody to pity me because I stand up all day. Uh, I stand up. That's where my feet are. In pro- I have problems with my feet because I stand up in my job all day and people tell me to sit down and I can't. And then I come home and I stand up all day cooking and I stand up and I stand up and stuff. And my boyfriend tells me to sit down. And my friends tell me to sit down. My coworkers tell me to sit down. And I don't sit down. So I'm not a person that sits down. I don't want pity. So, but when I get on the subway for one, for five, ten minutes, I'm riding the subway. Please, if you can give me a seat, it'd be nice. Anyway, so this shows you that it's not only me complaining. Okay, let me read some more. Let's see. Today it smells like tuna on the subway car. I'm writing it. I do not care for tuna. Some people do not use deodorant. Now, I can't make the world use deodorant. But somebody somebody told me, well, some people go natural. Okay, uh, natural. Uh, I can understand you don't want chemicals, but I, but I, I think that we have stuff that... Uh, that helps you out now, natural. You know, they have everything. They have, uh, everything's organic. I mean, there's, there's, I saw an organic car wash. An organic car wash to wash your car with organic water. Mamma mia. Anyway, so if there's organic car washes, there's got to wash something organic for your underarms. But please spare us 
the I wish there was a law with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. I wish you came out with a law that you have to use the order. You have to use something. Okay, use lemon or Mr. Lean or Mr. Clean or Spick and Span or something under the agenda because people are offended with your order, please. Don't tell me it's natural. It was natural when we were cavemen. When we were cavemen, that was natural. Okay, we walked around with a big baton and dragging meat. That was natural. This is not natural. So where the order in, okay? Because I'm not the only one complaining about it. Okay, let's see what else we got here. It says, uh, uh, MTA may be broken, but at least I never got into a subway and had to argue with the driver about what direction uh, my apartment's in. The trains sometimes, hey, you know, the trains get fucked up and uh, they head in a different direction. What can I do? Okay, let's see what else. Uh, uh, let the pigeons eat. It isn't time to find it. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got, I'm looking for stuff on the train. So I was squeezed into a crowded train this morning with a man's backpack pushing forcibly against me. When I told him his backpack was huge, he took it as a compliment. Idiot. He must have been an idiot. He must have been he must have been a tourist. You can't ride a train with a book bag. You can't. I have a book bag all the, all the time because I have my cane in there and I have all yeah, I have a colostomy cane. I have all kinds of medications and all kinds of stuff. But you take your bag off, take your bag off and put it in the, put it to the side, folks. You got it. The trains, you can't, I mean, when, when you wear a book bag or you wear a big tote bag, it is an addition of your body. In case you don't know that. It's an addition to your body. So when you're pushing with this book bag and you're maneuvering, you're hitting people with that bag. And it's you who's hitting the people with the bag. It's not the bag, you, because it's part of you. It's part of you. And I know it's a crowded train, but if you took your bag out, there might be a little bit, maybe three inches more space. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not too good at math, but it will be a little bit of space more. But at the other day I was riding the train, some lady had her tote bag in my face and I'm reading the paper and she has this tote bag and the tote bag keeps pushing me in the, the paper. And I find it went like this. And then she looks at me like I have two heads. She looks at me and gets pissed off at me because you've invaded my space, and now I said something about it, and now you're getting mad. Hey, who's the MTAA over here? So let's see what else. Walking through a subway tunnel, and suddenly it's smoky, and no one changes direction. Nothing faces New Yorkers. You see, when they have uh, uh, gunshots, people run to the danger. They run to danger because uh, that's how people are. So I don't know. Let's see what else. Uh, we need more police, not in the station, but on the trains. The amount of the amount of ignorant, rude people have increased tenfold with people blasting their speakers on the train. You use headphones. I don't want to hear your music. Thank you. This is coming from 6 a.m. to uh, 6 a.m. in the morning on the train. Good. Thank you. Uh, I listen to all type of music. But sometimes early in the morning, I, I don't listen to that. I, you know, I, don't, I just don't listen. I don't want to listen to anything. Just leave me alone. I don't want to listen to music early in the morning. I understand that some people need to put the music on, distract them from the world. But that's your distraction. That is your issue, not ours. So if you want to put headphones on and you want to li don't listen to the world, that's fine by me. That is fine by me. But don't. Don't. Uh, what we got here? Somebody sending me an email. Uh, yeah, don't, uh, we don't want to listen to your music, especially when you're sitting next to me. The other day there was a lady sitting next to me, a, a girl, and the music was blasting. Now she must be going deaf. I hope, I hope her, she has saving money for hearing aid because, you know, but I looked at her a couple of times and she, she noticed and she said, sir, um, is the music bothering you? And I says, you know, not for nothing, but yes, it is. She turned it down. She was nice. Somebody else is usually rude, but she turned it up. Really? We don't want to listen to your music. And all New Yorkers don't want to listen to your music. They send me this. This is actual stuff that I'm getting from people. So uh, so it's not only me. So you won't think that I'm the crazy one complaining. The neurotic one. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, here we go. 90% uh, of one train will get tired. skip the train. It's just got clogged. I don't know. People send me stuff. I don't know if it doesn't make sense. Anyway, let me see what else we got. I got this. all these papers here. Uh 
Let's see, why do we, why do people get angry when you ask them to move their bag so they can sit? If you want your bag to rest in the seat, swipe your card twice or give it yours. Great, great, thank you. Uh, this anonymous, they sent me this anonymous. So let me read this again. Why do people get angry when you ask them to move their bags so that you can sit? If you want your bag to rest in a seat, swipe your card twice or give it yours. Thank you. 275, it's one seat. Okay, it's like one chair, one fair, one chair, one fair. It's 275 a seat. Unless, unless I'm sorry, unless you big, you got to give that that seat is not for your bag. It's not for your bag. There's actually a law that you can't put your bag there. There was a couple of years ago, some Jewish guy got a, a summons because he had shopping bags on top of the on top of the seat. It's not for that. It's not for that. Please, oh God, it's not for that. So put your bag. I put my bag, my backpack between my legs. And if it's raining and the floor is wet, I fold my legs up in a way like this. I don't know. I can't show you. I'm not gonna. I can't go. But, but I, you put your your feelers and you put your bag in between, and it doesn't touch the floor. Common sense. Or you put it in your lap. The bag in your lap, you know. Oh yeah. So, you see, it's two seventy five a seat. Why should I? And some people, you stand there, and people don't move the bag. You hear that noise? Somebody dumping garbage. Anyway, folks, really, it, 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 we you, you people tell me, well, if I have friends of mine and people, critics of mine, who tell me, well, why don't you ask them to move the bag? I don't have to ask anybody to move the bag. You got conscience. I move the bag. If I see, if I had my bag there, I would move it without nobody asking me. If I had my bag there, which I don't, and the train was empty, and a bunch of people come in, I would move my bag. I don't have to be told. I'm an adult, okay? I'm already 50, over 50 years old. I don't have to be told what to do. Okay. So don't criticize me. It's I'm not the only one. Other people saying it. Okay, folks, let me see if I got anything more here. Uh, I run my eyes on the subway when I hear the ones... I don't know what the hell that is. Some people send me stuff I can't read. Uh, NTA announcer just said, hey, we're running train. Yeah. Okay. People cursing on the train. It, if the train starts, I see this all the time. They make an announcement that the train's going express. But because you have headphones on, because you have earpods, whatever you call it, you have that on, then you don't pay attention to the announcement. So now the train starts running express. And you start looking around, cursing at people, cursing the train, cursing at the conductor and the motor man. When you, it's your responsibility to be listening. And you should have been listening to the announcement. And then you would have heard you got off the train. Okay. So don't blame the MTA from going from express to, to, to uh, from going local to express or vice versa. Don't blame them because you got to listen to the announcement, please. You got to listen to the freaking announcement. I can't wear those things. I want to know if there's a shootout at the end of the train, I want to run this way. Okay. And if uh, if it's behind me, I want to run forward. I, you know, I gotta be. I gotta know what the hell's going on. So thank you, that uh, writer also as well. Uh, okay, let's see what else. Okay, here yeah, I'm. Uh, looks like I am going to get in a real good shape. I am going to ride my my bike on the train. <laughs> A bicycle on a train at rush hour is not cutting it. I'm sorry. I really am. I understand that you got to get from point A to point B, but what do you have a bike for? What do you have a bike for? Uh, sometimes you have to go someplace. I, I just don't understand. I, I, if somebody can ride a marathon for like 100 miles, you can ride a bike for 10 miles because folks, especially early in the morning, you get in with this bike and then you got a book bag on top of that and you got a bag on top of the bike and you look at other people, you look at us like we're stupid because we're trying to get into the train and you're taking up the whole place with the freaking bike. It's not for that. It's not for that. And the MTA should charge double. If you get on a train with a bike, you should charge double. You should be charged another 275 because you're taking up space and you should be charged twice. A double fare. Okay, you want to ride a bike? I don't find I don't mind if you ride the train with your bike. Pay double fare. Pay double fare. Anyway, that's it, folks.
this is all the stuff that people let me see if I have anything else. People send me stuff all the time. Tell me. Let's see if we have anything else here. Uh it gets better. It gets better. And yeah, people say, oh, the trades are going up. And don't let me start it. I'm being the fair. Let me get started on that. Don't get me started on that. That's for next segment. Being the fair. And then you complain when you get a hundred dollar ticket. A hundred dollar ticket. So you want to pay two seventy five? Oh, you want to pay a hundred? It's up to you. Let's see. Uh, you know how you just flew in from the one of the train? Okay, here we go. Uh, you know how you just flew from one side of the train to the other and landed on top of the... Uh, okay. You know how you just flew from one side of the train to the other side and landed on top of me. Who was it who was sitting down? That's why you should be holding on to something. The pole, it's not for you to dance. It's not for you to stand on it. It's not for you to hug and and be on your phone and hug the pole. This is what people do. It's to hold on. It's to hold on. So this guy here apparently went flying off and landed on this lady's lap. Pay attention. Pay attention and uh, hold on to something. Uh, I know there's germs. There's a million germs. There's a million germs wherever you touch. Your body has germs. Uh, you go down the block, you scratch your ass. You got germs in your hand. You know, people who go to the bathrooms. I see guys at work all the time. They they use the bathroom. They don't wash their hands. So there's germs everywhere. So don't even tell me about germs. So if you're telling me that you're not holding on a pole, then wear gloves or wear paper, whatever it is. But you got to hold on, not because you might bump into somebody or lie on somebody's lap or hurt somebody, an old person. But you could also go, if the train came, to, God forbid, if it derailed or came to a, a, a stop, hit something, you would probably go flying and then you would hurt yourself. You would break your arm or your leg or your neck and then you want to sue the MTA. You should have been holding on. You should have been holding on. So anyway, folks, that's it for today. Let me see. We got, okay. I went over a little bit. I try to keep this 20 minutes. Anyway, folks, I love you guys. That's what Uncle Jesse's about. I hope you enjoy this segment. I put a little bit of humor in it. <laughs> I love it. I love you guys. I really do. I just really, 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 I can't express how much I really love you guys, especially people who don't know me and support me and support what I do. And that those are the best fans. I mean, when, when you don't know people and people uh, believe in you and, and care for you and care what happens. And sometimes we have something in common and, uh, it really, 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 folks, it really uh, really hits me, really hits home. Uh, people from Chelsea and everybody else. And mentoring Chelsea, folks, I just want to take uh, one minute to, uh, to, uh, to, give, to offer my condo- condolences to a, uh, 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 Jose and, 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 Sher- and uh, Sharon, Jose and Sharon Sanchez. They are tenants from 446. Uh, long-time tenants from Chelsea Projects. And Sharon and I know we go way back to when we were in high school. Uh, we used to cut out of school. We cut out a couple of times, hang out at 13th Street Park. I don't know if she remembers, but uh, anyway, uh, just this week they lost their son, a very young man, uh, Jose Jr. And uh, it was a tragic, uh, something that really happened, tragedy. And... Uh, he actually the wake is tonight, and uh, I couldn't make it because of my because of my condition. But uh, my thoughts and prayers are with them, uh, the Sanchez family, and uh, may he rest in eternal peace. So anyway, folks, with that said, um, Uncle Jesse is going to go enjoy. It. He's going to go cook. Actually, I have to go cook myself. Myself, I have a steak and I have some potatoes that I want to make, and uh, that's it, folks. Uh, just going to try to enjoy Saturday night. At home, uh, and remember, when you're riding the train, please don't be an MTA a hole, because Uncle Jesse is watching, and Uncle Jesse sees it all. So don't be an MTA a hole. Remember, cover your mouth. It's flu season. That's another episode I'm going to talk about. It's flu season. Cover your mouth. Don't be an a hole. Cover your mouth. Uncle Jesse loves you. If you're going out tonight, don't drink and drive. Ride the MTA. But remember, only one seat. One seat. Love you guys. Love you.